All right, guys, welcome back. The last time you were here, we were talking about underpinning, and today we're going to be talking about piles. These piles are 35 feet long, made out of steel, and their tips are made out of carbon steel, just in case to cut through any type of a dense structure, such as bedrock, and it goes right through. And with these piles, we're gonna create a perimeter around the property to make sure that it's fully secure, so that when we do lagging, and when we do shoring, and we have our slope of 45 degrees going down 15 feet, the property's safe, so I want you to come inside. Let's go. All right, guys, so we did our last underpin. Remember, this is an extra step that is not per plan that we're taking just to be precautionate. When we do the second underpin, we're going an additional seven feet, four inches. And remember, the bottom of our elevator pit has a sump pump fit, so we're going another two feet from that. In total, almost 16 feet. But the good news is, is the first underpin went smooth, and that's the hardest part. Whenever there's a problem with an underpin, you'll usually know in the first section. So for all my developers and all my contractors or all my people that are just listening, how do you know if you're gonna be having a hard time doing underpinning, you'll know within the first week of underpinning. And you can know just as doing the first underpin based on the footing and the foundation of the adjacent property, we had no struggle. The vibration monitoring did not move. We were green, green, green. We have those readings on site. As I told you, in case an inspector walks in, you're able to cross verify that everything is done perfection to code. And that's what we do here with Richie's Ave. Efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. Let's go to the piles. We're gonna see that compression machine is connected to this yellow pipe, which is pushing out 1,100 pounds per square inch of air into this ginormous pile machine, which is driving these soldier piles, also known as H piles, into the ground. Now the purposes of these piles are for slope stabilization. Now what that means is you're driving these piles down and the next step is lagging. We're gonna have to do a slope of 45 degrees. Some of it's gonna go down 15 feet. To make sure that the integrity of the properties nearby, you put these piles in and then you do the lagging. Let's talk about cost. Now with a $400,000 line item for just foundation, $100,000 of that line item is piles. We got 20 piles, so you could do the math. Take 20, divide it by 100, labor inclusive. And these machines, by the way, the compressor and the one behind me are about $450,000 each. And that's if you're in the game. If you're not in the game, you're probably paying about five, five fifty dollars easy. Now we've driven already three piles behind me. And as you can see, the stakeout team has already marked that they're six feet apart from one another. And typically, they're four to eight feet apart from each other. In some instances, you have 36 inches, depending on various situations. And in this particular instance, the engineer already pre-mapped that out. We didn't have to figure that out. He gave us a set of plans that we gave it to the pile guy to make sure that that is cross-referenced. Now, these piles are gonna be done in one more business day. But remember, you do everything parallel. We're still gonna be doing underpinning on the second section of that adjacent wall while installing the Wheeler Raker. In the interim, we're gonna be doing piles. We've already ordered lagging behind us. We have the wood timber that we're gonna be using to make sure that everything, not these two by four studs, the big one from Douglas fir, they're thick, they're strong, and you're able to get them in, some by code. That lagging is gonna be done simultaneously as soon as the piles are finished. Remember, we're going down in total 16 feet deep, and I need you guys to understand that when you're doing 16 feet, you can't just do one section. We're underpinning both sections, Strategy guys, pause. Right now we're coordinating shop drawings for elevator, we're coordinating shop drawings for windows, we're coordinating shop drawings for kitchens. Those items, just those three, by the way, there's many other items, but just those three items have a long lead time item wait list. We're getting them overseas. We know it's gonna be between 90 and 120 days. And we know that exactly one month from today, I start to need those items. So slowly, slowly, I already need the elevator. I already need to know the windows are in route while we go vertical. I already need to know that once I'm vertical, the kitchens can technically come in after framing. These things are one after another. It is my job, my responsibility as the developer to make sure that the contractor, the subcontractor, the project manager, and all of my tradesmen that I'm doing business with are on time with delivery. The point of these videos is I'm telling you the strategy on how we implement everything day to day. And I want you guys to implement those strategies day to day. If you guys are learning something, I want you to put in the comments, hey Rich, I have a question. I understand A, B, and C, but I have a question about so and so. Please give us a detailed answer. Now, if I respond to you in a comment or I make a whole video about it, I will get back to you. Remember, this is a YouTube community. There's not a lot of developers, contractors, and or owners. Even for people that just love the game, hobbyers, there's not a lot of us and we need to stay together and this community is gonna grow. And remember, we're doing this thing 
as a free server. We're not selling nothing. None of this is sign up to my course and we're gonna get you involved and we're gonna show you sessions. It's all free, it's all fun. We're trying to make it creative. We're spending a lot of time creating, editing, and making it fun with you guys. So we need your support to blow this up for other people like you to learn. This is all a moving target and each of them have a timeline and they all chain reaction to one another. So if you delay one, essentially, you're gonna delay the whole job. That's why you gotta come to the site, start here, see what's going on, push what you can push and end the job at your office. It's a football. You throw it and your wide receiver catches it. Let's go.